Hey, what's up guys? Alec here from Cichlid Bros. In today's video, we're going to talk about five problems you can run into when keeping African cichlids and how to avoid them. This isn't any type of top 10 list or countdown. They're in no particular order. These are just five things that I've noticed in my time keeping African cichlids that can be problematic and some things that have worked out better for me. This is my 125 gallon Predator Hap tank. It's been up and running for about two years with these guys. Everyone's growing up and coloring up really nicely, very happy and healthy, and the tank's just doing great. I've kept many different kinds of African cichlids, and this list is compiled of my experiences, good and bad, with those cichlids. So, without any further ado, let's dive right in. Problem number one is overlighting your tank. African cichlids typically do not do well with plants in the aquarium, so really the main purpose of lighting is for your own enjoyment and so the fish can see what they're doing. If you're getting a bunch of natural light in your tank and have your tank lights on full blast for six plus hours a day, a few problems could arise. For one, you might be constantly battling algae issues caused by the combination of too much light and the fact that African cichlids pr produce a lot of waste. Another problem caused by too much light is the stress it can cause on the fish. This can cause them to react by getting sick and hiding out and getting picked on all the time because African cichlids can tend to gang up on the weak link in the tank and that excess light stress can also cause fish to act more crazy and more aggressive leading to more fighting, nipped fins, and damaged scales. I keep my lights on for four total hours each day on low light setting set on a timer for two hours when I get home from work and like to watch my fish, and two hours at night when I'm relaxing in my fish room. My tanks are in my basement and don't get a lot of natural light, so I do leave the basement light dimmed for them during the day so they can see what they're doing. Ever since I limited my light schedule, I've dealt with way less aggression and algae. Problem number two is overcrowding. One popular theory when dealing with African cichlid aggression is overstocking your tank. This theory is pretty unique to African cichlids and can lead to having a tank that is really tough to manage. For some African cichlids, I think overstocking works pretty well to a certain point. For example, Demasoni are one of the most aggressive Mbuna and cannot be kept with other Demasoni unless you have something like a 12 to 1 female to male ratio or the male will tear the other females apart. The problem comes when the bile load is too much to manage. When overstocking your tank, you might need to have a pretty frequent water change schedule, even as much as every other day. If you can do that and it works for you, great, but it is something to be aware of before trying this method. The other thing about overstocking is that it doesn't even always work. You may still get a rogue fish or a territorial tank boss owning half the tank or killing off challengers one by one. Now you just got a tank stuffed with big open water swimmers with no open water or cave dwellers that don't have enough caves for all of them and you're still dealing with an aggression and a difficult water change schedule. In my opinion, stocking on the lighter side improves water quality and in my experience, it has not led to more aggression at all. Actually, it has been the opposite. Problem number three is overfeeding. One of my favorite pieces of advice about keeping fish is that a hungry fish is a healthy fish. Now, I'm not saying I starve my fish or give them sunken bellies or anything, but I feed my fish once a day and I don't feed them on Sundays. I've heard a lot of theories on feeding, like feed them as much as you can until they start leaving food on the bottom, or feed them as much as they can eat in a two minute span. In my experience, it has been almost impossible to feed them to the point where they won't eat anymore. They just keep eating and eating. As I tested these limits, I noticed it affected water quality and clarity. It did not lessen aggression and it did not seem to stimulate growth by that much. I think growth and coloring up is more affected by water quality than getting fed a lot. And always erring on the side of less food protects you from sicknesses like Malawi bloat that come from overfeeding. My fourth problem you can run into is with tank mates. I'm not really a fan of mixing African cichlids with any other type of fish, and that's just a personal preference. 
but it becomes more than a personal preference when you put a slow moving fish in with these guys that can cause a lot of problems. Many problems can arise from trying a mixed African cichlid tank as well. Mbuna are the prey of predatory haps in the wild, so obviously that would be an issue. But a less obvious issue is that Mbuna can even be too aggressive to share a tank with peacocks. It can be done, but it is a risk. Another mistake to avoid is how you introduce your fish to an established aquarium. Adding a single fish or fish that is the smallest in the tank can be a death sentence. It's best to add African cichlids to a tank in groups and in similar size to what is already in the tank. And problem number five is male to female ratio. When buying African cichlids at a fish store, you will probably be buying them at a young age where you can't always tell if it's a male or female, especially in certain mbuna that are not always dimorphic, meaning males and females look the same. In most African cichlid show tanks, you want an all-male tank. This is because males have the best color and having no females in the tank can make the males act more peaceful. African cichlids can get very territorial when breeding and a random female or two in the tank can get picked on pretty bad. I recommend buying from online dealers where the sex is guaranteed. This way, whether you want a breeding tank or an all-male show tank, you know what you're getting. All right guys, that's my five problems to avoid when keeping African cichlids. Let me know in the comments below if you've encountered any of these problems before, if you agree or disagree, or have any problems to add. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.